What's up guys, Reese here, and what you just saw then was a preview of what we're going to be making in this tutorial today. So, yeah, first of all, I'm in Sony Vegas 9 here, and you're going to need your cinematic. I've already done this already. I've got my cinematic. It's HD. I, I cropped the spectate buttons off. I put a bit of color correction on, okay? Now, we're going to just like highlight it, and we're going to save it as... What we basically do is... Um, we you find a what you got to do is find out where you want to save it and you have to make a new folder so right click new folder here and then go into the folder and you're going to save it as an image sequence and put the template as a jpeg and then hit save but i've already done this before so you're going to let that save okay and once that is saved we're going to go into buju so i'll meet you then okay it's rendered and we're in buju right now which is the program that we're going to be used for motion tracking? Um, I just want to say I'm sorry if I'm going a bit fast, but um, I gotta do this in 10 minutes, so I gotta hurry up, okay? So, in Bougie, we're gonna hit import sequence and we're going to locate the folder where you saved all them pictures to in that folder. So, desktop, um, as in juicers for a juicers edit. Um, here it is. So now as you can see right here we've got thousand like loads and loads of pictures which will make up our movie. So we're gonna hit the first one and hit open, hit apply and hit close. And if I scroll through it here's just the cinematic. Now we're gonna hit edit camera and change the frame rate to twenty nine point nine seven, hit apply and close, and then hit track features, then make sure it's all frames and hit start. And basically what this is going to do is it's just going to quickly track the features. You don't really need to know anything about this at the moment. But yeah, this is going to take about 5 minutes to track. So I'm just going to pause it right here and come back once it's done. Okay, now this is done. As you can see, the track feature is done. So now what we're going to do, we're going to hit the next button in line, which is camera solve. And we're going to make sure all frames are checked again. And we're going to check optimize path, camera path smoothness. Press start. And as you can see now, it's just... This is gonna be a lot quicker. Look, this is gonna this is um, gonna be finished in a couple of minutes. And um, if this for you goes really really slow, that's because there's something to do with either you using a dazzle or something, or the um, it's not HD or something like that. Um, uh, so yeah, if it just goes really slow, then that's it's just your clip basically. It's nothing to do with Bijou, okay? So I'm gonna pause this again and then come back once it's finished. Okay, now this is finished. As you can see, this is a bit more simpler. What you can see here, I've got to frame zero, and I just scroll through this. As you can see, these circles are staying in position, like as if it was actually in the map. So you can see, like that, this is sticking to this. These the, like the rubbish on the ground, as you can see, and the dots are not moving, uh, which is good. And this is like the part of what you motion track. All then you do is put a 3D object connected to these dots and the that's how you'd motion track all these are motion track to the um, to the gameplay right now there's a couple of other stuff that we need to do quickly something to do with called scene geometry so I'm just gonna go to about halfway on my timeline and we can see all these dots there and I'm gonna press control G or it might be command G if you're on Mac I'm not sure and we're gonna hit add coordinate from hint now we're going to select two of these which are vertical to each other, parallel and vertical. So I'll say I choose this one and this one. By the way, you select one and it will turn green and hit Control, uh, keep it pressed down, and then choose another one, and they'll both be highlighted. When you've highlighted these both, look the vertical and the parallel. The vertical ones you're going to change their type to the Z axis. Hit Connect, and then. We're going to add quantum from hint, hint again. I'm going to choose the x axis, which will be the horizontal ones. So I'm going to choose that one, hit control, and choose that one there. there they're okay. And um, change the type to x axis. Select, connect to selected. So we've got the x axis, which are these two, and we've got the z axis, which are these two, these two green ones. I'm going to choose one more to make it uh, even better. We're going to choose. We're going to add one from hint again. I'm going to choose a middle one, which is about here, and we're going to call this one an origin. And you see, I've only selected one. I'm going to connect that and then update the coordinate, update coordinates to frame. Then that is about it. We're just going to hit export and export camera solve. And I'm going to save it in a folder. 
and I'll just call it Tut. And we're going to change the Xbox type to Cinema 4D. Change the scale by scene to 100. Hit OK. And the last thing we're going to do is e export the sequence. And I'm going to put it in the same folder, but I'm going to call it Tut Video. And then hit OK. And we'll let this render, and I'll see you in Cinema 4D. Okay, now that this is done, we don't need Bougie anymore, so I'm going to go into Cinema 4D. I'm going to hit File, Open, and we're going to open the Tut Cinema 4D file. And make sure it's scaled to 10, not 100. And then we'll have this. I'm just going to drag this arrow out here so we can see the full um, all of the timeline. Then we're going to hold down this and select the background. And then go to the materials manager down here, hit file, new material, and let's go into the material here. And under the texture tab, hit load image, but we're not going to load the image, we're going to load the tucked video that we just rendered. X out of that, and we're going to drag the video onto the background. So now what we've got is we've got this null object here, and if I scroll through it, this null object is motion tracked with the scene. You know, it stays in position. Now there is something that we're going to have to do right now um, that will allow us to put the shadows onto the floor, okay? And this takes a couple of steps, so I'm just going to show you what we do. So we're going to first of all add a floor, and on the coordinates on the X and the Z axis we're going to bring the, um, make the floor bigger. About there. And then we're going to add this same material to the floor, and change the projection of the material to frontal. And right click on the floor and hit Cinema 4D tags compositing and uncheck self shadowing and check composite background. Okay, so now if we just quickly render out this, it looks all normal. And you, uh, don't worry about the side bits, they're not going to be rendered. So now, if we put a light in and put shadows on the light and put an object in, you'll see shadows on the floor, which is all good. And just, I'm just going to show you what we've created so anything now that we import into Cinema 4D any 3D object that we make will be motion tracked with this uh, top null so say I put this cube in I had a light on and on the light we go to the shadows and enable the shadows hit soft soft maps bring this up a bit and then if I just render this we have got the we've got the shadow on the floor not only have we got a shadow on the floor if I run through this, it's, this is this cube is also motion tracked, so it will stay in position. It's there. Move back. It's still there. It's not. It's not moving position. So you could put your text in. You could put whatever. You could animate whatever three D stuff you want, and it will be motion tracked. So that is about it for now. Um, again, we use Sony Vegas to render it. We use Buju to motion track it. We use Cinema 4D for the three D work. One last thing, I'm going to show you how to render it. Um, hit this button here to go into the render settings output 1280 by 720 um, frame range you want all frames well, I'm not going to choose that for now but you choose all frames anyway save we're going to you choose a destination to where you want to save it and then uh, you click quick time move it that's the format um, go to an anti analyzing and change the analyzing or whatever to best and then you want to change the filter to animation and that is about it then we can just exit out of this and then you will hit render to picture viewer and it will render it out for you so that's about it i'm reese262k thanks for watching and if you need any help then just comment in the um, comment below and i'll try and read as many comments as i can and answer them thanks